Hi peeps, today we are unboxing the second edition of Oracle of Echoes by Anna Torian. So I have, let's have a little tarot story time together. So I worked with this deck a great deal a few years ago, especially. I purchased it a while back, the first edition, and I really worked with this deck a lot. And in fact, I think I talked about on the channel how much I enjoyed working with it. Um, for those of you who like to scroll back, I'm sure I have videos back around 2017, 2018, maybe, maybe 2019, really just talking about how much I love this deck as a clarifier in readings and how beautiful the artwork is and how much I enjoyed it. In one of my moves, that deck got damaged. This happens very rarely for me and was very, very upsetting. And I don't know if I just hadn't been aware, but somehow over the last two months, I became aware that there was a second edition that was going to be available. So I jumped on purchasing it. So I no longer have that deck that was damaged. So I cannot show you the reference with the first edition, but I can say that that first edition was really beautiful and it was wonderful to read with. It was a very, very intuitive deck. So today we're going to um, open and look up, look at the second edition and I'll share initial thoughts with you guys as always. So the little description here is the Oracle of Echoes is a vivid 60 card deck divination system that explores the inner reflections of the human psyche, offering a unique magical entrance into the patterns of our soul through beautiful intuitive illustrations full of color and symbolism. And then this is, can you see that? The backing. So let's open her up and see. So there isn't a guidebook. Oh, I, I do. The first edition had red backing. So I will say that I am a little sad to see that there isn't any red backing. Let's check out. Cardstock. It's not super slippery, but it's not matte. You can see that. Can you see there's like a little reflect? Yeah. Oh, cardstock's good. It'll, it feels very similar to the original, if I recall correctly, and it should break in really well. So that's not a problem for me. Here is the little about card that accompanies the deck. And here are the images. I just love... To me, this is like soul cards in that when you work with that, the imagery, it's so purely intuitive that when it comes to offering clarification in a reading, it really lets you get into a space of being able to like flesh out answers for people or for yourself if you're just reading for yourself. These are also really great images to meditate with to do daily draws with, and to just sit with like, what comes up for you? What are you exploring as you're looking at the imagery? You know, where are you emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically? There's so many, I do, I love this lover's card. Isn't that beautiful? There's just so many, um, different ways that you can work with this deck. I love symbiosis, isn't that beautiful? And the the watercolor aspect is just, oh! <laughs> it's just really, really beautiful. Wait guys, did I forget to show you the backing? This is the backing. So in the first edition, this is red and this is more of a blue tone now, which I will say, but you guys know I love red and black, like that's kind of my thing. Um, I will say I did prefer the red more, but the blue is really lovely. It's not a bad backing at all. The Sorrow card is one of my favorites. Shadow Self, Sever. So what you're working with here is imagery and a card title. And from there, you're really gonna trust your intuition when you're working with this deck. And you're just gonna let it take you where it takes you, self-involved. I love this image. Isn't that just so, like so much this is the type of thing where I can look at this and just journal for pages on what comes up. And that's part of that inner practice, right? So if you're like, I want to get a deck like this, but I don't know how I would actually work with it and it wouldn't just be something pretty that's a collector's item that sits on my shelf. 
take the deck out, draw a card, journal on what comes up for you. Just totally riff off of what you see, feel, hear, know, understand as you're looking at the cards. Here's the lost card. I love that imagery. That type of thing is going to help you to develop your own divinatory system with the deck. And it's going to help you to get comfortable with, I love this card, Limitless. It's going to help you to get comfortable with trusting your intuition when it comes to clarifying. Here's Inner Strength, Inner Child. So this is a card that was featured on the backing of the box. I love that one. The home card, this is so fascinating because there's so many different ways that you can take this card, this image, right? Like it could be nostalgic, reminiscent. It could also be frightening, right? Bad memories here could also be represented just with the color tones and the diffuse way that she worked with it with the watercolors. There's a lot of ways that you can take that card. And the beautiful thing is when you pair it with tarot, let's say you get the tower and then you get the home card. I mean, that's pretty clear about where you're experiencing a breakdown in structure, right? Love that fear imagery. death card. I love the creativity card. I think I might have talked about this in older videos, but there's just something so like expansive and joyous about this image, but also with that red, like really empowering, right? Here's create space. And I'm going to save the last few. Uh, well, I do want to show you the breakthrough card. This was one that got really damaged for me and just broke my freaking heart. Here's the boundaries. I'm going to show you a few more. I like the boundaries card. Beyond the veil. Awaken inner force here. Oh, I love this one. A warning. Look at that. Isn't that freaking gorgeous? So I'll leave the, the last few for you to discover on your own if you feel drawn to purchase it. But I, I'm not disappointed at all. I'm so thankful I have this deck back in my collection and I can really work with her in a new way. In fact, I intend to devote a new journal to connecting with how I experience the imagery with this deck in 2022 versus back in the day when I was using it a lot. Uh, it really broke my heart when that deck was damaged. And part of that problem that I'm trying to like decide in my mind, here we go, tarot story time again, guys, is like, I don't tend to save these flimsier boxes. And I'm kind of thinking I need to do that because then I won't have damage happen in transit, which is what occurred with this deck in transit from Portland. So those are my thoughts. Love this deck. If you're drawn to the imagery and you're open to connecting with it and developing your own intuitive divination system with it, you want this deck. It's absolutely worth it. Highly, highly recommend. I love her. I love Anna's artwork. I've loved all of her decks that I've had. I just, she's so good at like evoking an emotion and opening up intuition without having to overfill an image with a lot of stuff going on, if that makes sense. So I am sending you all so much love and many blessings. Thank you for hanging out with me for a little bit. And as always, I will see you in the next video.